Right. Welcome to our um, first Democratic Services meeting of uh, the new year on the 11th of July 2022. Um, the first item on the agenda is the election of a vice chair for the present municipal year 2022-2023. Do we have any nominations? Welcome. Uh, Leslie? Yeah, can I nominate Wendy? Is Wendy willing to stand? Of course. That's all right then. Have we any other nominations? No? Leslie, oh, Leslie still get your hand up. All oh, right, OK. Well, if there's no other nominated, oh, then we need a second there. Does anybody second Wendy? Could I second that, please, Chair? Thank you. Is everybody in favour? I think that's carried. There are a lot of hands. Thank you. Welcome, Wendy. <laughs> You've got another job. Right. Have we any apologies for absence, please? Um, no apologies for absence, Chair. OK. Have we any disclosures of personal and prejudicial interests? Any hands? No? That's good. Well, we'll move on to the minutes. Right. Has anybody got any corrections to make on the minutes on the first page or the second page? There's only two. No? Can we ask somebody to move the correct record, please? I'll move those. Thank you, Wendy. Is there a seconder? Yeah, second that, Chair. Thank you. Whoever that was. Yeah. <laughs> again. We'll move on again. Um, right. The next item is what is the democratic services function? This is for information. I presume you've all read it. Have you anything to raise, Hugh, about yeah, this? I'll go. Thank you, Chair. It, it's a brief report, mainly aiming to assist those new to the Democratic Services Committee, giving some context to what the committee is, where it stemmed from. So I, I, I will just briefly just give some uh, highlights on it. Um, the Local Government Wales Measure 2011 um, uh, created the Democratic Services Committee and also created the post of Head of Democratic Services, um, and that's the post that I hold. The Democratic Services function is to is to basically to ensure that councillors get what they need to carry out their duties. That's touching on things like um, maternity cover, paternity cover, um, for, for leave and things like that. It's ensuring that we get adequate numbers of staff in the democratic and scrutiny functions for, for me and my team to undertake the, the services that is required of councillors, um, to look at training of councillors, and things along the, that ilk. It's all listed here. I, I'm not going to go into great depth on it. Um, and it also, the Dem Democratic Services has been a very useful body over the years, assisting with giving some advice to us, uh, what councillors thought about how we could roll out electronic voting, webcasting. I know it's all can become legislative, but we were still looking at it before the legislation came in and it's been quite it's been quite a useful body in that sense so i've got a thing to add to the to the information report but i would, would take any questions should anybody have any is there any questions joe that's yes. no messages patience no. patience and see your hand is up Okay, Chair, and this question is for Hugh. Uh, just uh, as a new councillor, I just need a bit more clarity between uh, the difference between uh, family absence and annual leave. Okay, well, councillors don't get annual leave. Uh, there's nothing formal that gets stopped you getting annual leave. You, you take time off whenever you wish. However, I'd, I'd always recommend that you 
anytime you take off the you liaise with your political group and things so everyone's aware that, that you're not around obviously inform democratic services so we can record your apologies um and, and of course importantly speak to someone uh, if you're in a, a multi-member ward that your colleagues are aware so they can cover the ward work if you're a single member ward you may want to speak to a colleague that can perhaps take some messages and th things th along those lines um the other type of leave that you talked about you know um family absence then that is specifically for fostering for paternity for maternity and things like that but if you need time off there, there is no annual leave to book you just do it but i do urge you to liaise with your whips or your or your um group leaders hopefully that answers that question are there any more questions i don't see any more hands up no well, we'll move on to the next item then which is the democratic services committee annual report this is a draft report okay th thank you uh, annually we take uh, the democratic service annual report to council um, the Dem Services Committee gets a chance to comment on it um, beforehand it sets out the work of the democratic services committee during the previous year so for this is 21 22. despite covid we did do quite a few things uh, more than i initially thought because when when alison helped me in drafting the report i was a little concerned that oh there's not much to say but we still did get a few things in despite the fact that we didn't meet as often as perhaps we would have liked to have met um, so to use, we've tried to go for a bit of a new style annual report, um, try to put in some pictures in of the councillors, give it a little bit more background. Um, so if I just go through it on page page eleven, we've got the foreword by the by the chair of the committee, Councillor Linda James. Uh, the next page just shows some pictures and shows those councillors that were members. Uh, paragraph three on, on page 13 sets out the dates of the meeting that when, when the committees were held, the terms of reference, and then perhaps more importantly for me is page 14, setting out the work that we did during the period. And you know, the council induction and training program, I'm not asking for any comments on that now because we'll discuss that a little later, but that was one of the big pieces of work the committee did. Um, the councillor questionnaire, looking to develop this the hybrid meeting policy which is now called the multi-location meetings we had the interim guidance from the multi uh, from the welsh government from the senate on multi-location meetings um we dealt with the annual reports for two years because obviously covid and uh council's ict allowance which led to a major change to the policy in january i know we amended it again slightly in the last council in july but the big work was done uh, beforehand and of course the diversity and democracy action plan which is something that i'll be bringing back to the committee uh i'll say, I'll say shortly when i've when i've done a review where we are on that piece of work um sadly we saw the the, the sad uh, the awful murder of the uh sitting mp down in england and that led me to bring uh, a reviewed councillor safety and support to report to the committee and I, I really do advise everybody to be very careful on council safety and support. You know, it, it is a serious matter. There's some awful people out there, unfortunately. Um, the IRP annual report that was brought, we reviewed the council handbook and we looked at some member development things. Uh, other than that, uh, I've got nothing to add to the annual report, but I ask um, obviously for it to be supportive, for it to progress to council, but I'll take any questions should anybody have any. Has anybody got any questions or comments? No? Can we have a proposal that we accept it as it is and it's take it to full council? Yeah. Wendy, yep. thank you. Is there a seconder? I think it's Leslie. Put a hand up. Um, is everyone in favour? Looks like it. I think it is. Is anybody against? No. Right. I think that one's carried. Yeah. Move it forward. Right. We're moving 
through this agenda fact quite quickly, aren't we? The next item is the review of the councillors' induction and training programme for 2022. That was a very full programme. There was a lot packed into a few weeks. In fact, it's not quite finished yet. Some of us have still got some more training sessions to meet. Oh, OK, thank you very much, everybody. Um, no doubt this report will go through as quick as the others. So let's move on. No, no. <laughs> I suspect not. Let me give some um, some defence. You know, this every time uh, that we run this programme, and it's always gets amended on the Dem Services Committee and Council recommended this forward. But I'm, I'm expecting the same feedback from all of you Too, too, too much too quickly. Um, I'm going to give some defence to that. A, all the councillors approved that programme beforehand, but the more importantly, and, and being quite serious about it, the induction programme is intentionally aimed to get a lot of information out very quickly because the new councillors need that information. I think it would be fair to say you could almost run the programme again come January when it probably means a little bit more to those new councillors when they've had a chance to settle in because it is a bit of a rabbit in headlight situation. There's so much information departed quickly, which we've got to do. We've got to tell you about how to claim. We've got to tell you about the code of conduct. We've got to tell you about planning and licensing and safeguarding and all the other things you've read. It's a hell of a lot of information, but it does go out very quickly. And I know a lot of people will have turned up there. They'll, they'll have heard words often instead of understanding the context. So if anyone needs additional training or to, to redo these trains, obviously we can do that. Um, I will take any questions. I know, you know it's, it's a difficult one. I know people have got their views. One point that I will uh, mention as well, I felt some of the sessions were far too long. And that's, that's one, of the, one of my observations. But um, I'll take any comments people may have. Right, Leslie, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I've got, I've got a few, uh, but I have actually sent Hugh a couple. Uh, one thing that I've always felt it would be really useful from a practical point of view going through uh, an agenda. I mean, you could not obviously leave out anything personal or confidential, but I think that, in a way, is one of the things I think was missing. There, I don't think there was enough practical help for new councillors going into committee meetings. There was a lot of information and a lot of it I don't think we needed yet. Needed, needed as you say, I would totally agree, six months down the line, do some more extend on the, the basics that were done, but now take it to a slightly more in-depth level. I think some of the information was too in-depth straight away. And, and once you start going down that route, I would say, I mean, uh, others might disagree, but sometimes it's so overwhelming, you hardly take anything in. It becomes too big a step to sort of really assimilate. Um, I think then, then that's the main thing. I mean, I think some of the sessions were good. I think there was lots of information. From what I understand, sadly, I wasn't well that day, but by the sound of it, the marketplace is a great idea. 100% carry on doing that. Really good. I wish I'd been there. I wish I'd been there well enough to go, but I thought I won't risk infecting other people. Um, I think that's mainly it. Too a bit too heavy going and yes I totally agree with too long I can remember one thing that was only supposed to be an hour and a half it went on to oh two hours 20 something like that and by the time you get even to two hours your brain's addled so over two hours definitely no no thank you very much thank you Leslie but would you like to share the other items that you sent to Hugh so that we are all aware of them don't have to, but I think it would be useful. I think mainly it was um, com the, the fact that it was a bit too complex and it didn't uh, do enough just yeah. on basics. Okay. Um, and there's a, an, a suggestion I've got for something else to, for training, because um, just recently, I think we've all received an um, emergency management newsletter. 
And it struck me that's something that's quite practical because I'm sure a lot of councillors and even councillors who've been here for quite a while could do with a reminder as to what our responsibilities are in the case an emergency is called. So wouldn't I don't think it would need to be a very long session, but I think that would be helpful. Thank you. That would be useful. Thank you. I think that was it. <laughs> right. Thanks, Leslie. Um, Bridget? Thank you, Linda. Um, no, I just wanted to say that, um, all right, I know I'd, I I was sitting here five years before, but I also found the training helpful. It was quite, it, 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 some of it is long winded, but at the same time, we do need to know, and, and things change and, you know, things, uh, matters change and we need to be informed of it. So whilst it is long winded, it's also very, very much needed. Um, I totally agree with Leslie. If we could just condense them down a bit, um, I'm sure, you know, we'd all find them. And you don't mind them being in a block because you know that you've got a month of training. But, you know, if they were condensed down a bit, that would I think that would just help everybody. But otherwise, you know, it's um, it's something that's very much needed and helpful as well. Thank you. Anybody else? Wendy Lewis. Oh. Sorry, I couldn't see your hand up on here, Wendy. I agree with you. I agree with Leslie and Bridget. It, it can be very long. I think what some officers, and I'm not being horrible, read it out to you. You've got it on the sheet and then you, it just then goes longer and longer and then you get bored. I mean, the best one I've ever been to was our Section 151 officer because he actually made it fun, even though I hate anything to do with figures or anything. That that to me is was the best, and a lot of people agree. So I think you need to make it more fun, more not in the fun way. I just mean that you're not getting bored. And I read this, and I, I to me it upsets me a little bit because as a councillor, new councillor five years ago, I attended, you know, a fly on the wall because that's what I was expected to do. Now I don't know whether these councillors were who didn't attend, but said they were attending and didn't attend were old uh, hands or new hands. But I think if you say you're going and you can't go for whatever reason, you then let someone know. Because it's not hard. It's just I can't attend. That's all. Because then it, to me, that that is the bad part of it. If you are a councillor and if you want to continue being a councillor and serve your community, you should be at these meetings at these uh, training uh, mm -hmm. meetings. And I just think that upsets me more than anything, that the, the, the people, the councillors weren't there. So that that's all. But I, as for everything else, I mean, the market day was good. I didn't go there too late because I'd done all that before. But I thought it was still good. There were still people that I could talk to there. Mm -hmm. And and the training is good. A pity it was all on teams because I'd rather be in person, but that's the way, way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, I know you're saying that, but I... No, yes, I know who. No, I know. All the training was... Yeah, in, all. But no, I you didn't come read in. that on oh, the... Oh, right, okay. Yeah, it was on, on that sheet. I just was ticking off them. I didn't look at there, so that I preferred to come in. So I wish I had now come in for the training. I think it would have made it better for me. Thank you. Right. Well, I just got two comments. One was that um, I thought the um, marketplace was brilliant. It was good to be able to meet some of the officers, especially after two years of not meeting them and pick up new officers that could be useful to you in the future for various issues. Um, but as to some of the training sessions, I think some of the trainers could do with some training. All they did was read from the screen the notes the um what is her th the, the, whatever was written on the screen I and mean, you could have just done that yourself at home much quicker sorry yeah i was i was just going to partly echo what what the other members have said so far the the marketplace event was excellent if anything as a new councillor i could have probably done with a bit more time mingling with the various officers um which says it was good because I want more of it. Um, uh, yeah, the comment on the training, I, I won't go over the bits that, that have already been mentioned. It, there was very much a focus on um, on imparting knowledge. 
Whereas I think somebody mentioned it would have been really useful to know the basics of how an agenda's run, how to vote, um, how to, the feedback from some of our new councillors, you know, how does the, you know, really critical stuff right at the beginning, how does the cabinet system work and interact with officers? Um, and, and also this is one we can maybe think about, you know, is there any skills training we can impart? So, you know, is there anything we can give new, new councillors about how to do casework or make sure you're keeping track of all your casework, things like that? Um, in, in terms of the length of them, just going on to a slightly different area as well, I think one or two of the sessions, and I know this is a bit delicate, but could have done with stronger chairing. Um, I, I, for me, the one that stood out, although this was a general comment, was the violence against women session. There were a lot of good comments being made, but that's an extremely important subject. And the trainers didn't get through everything that they wanted to say in the time available. So, you know, there needs to be some way of making sure that that the, the important information imparted by the officers actually gets imparted. I, I, again, any one of the councillors comments was fine, but there was just so much of it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how to, to phrase that delicately, but we need to speak less. <laughs> so mm. thank you. Um, patience. Thank you, Chair. Uh, again, it's just to re-echo okay, everything you. that um, everyone has said. But uh, as a new councillor, what I found most useful was definitely the marketplace. And I think there should, that should definitely go on. Um, and I wish I could ask for more hours for that, to be honest, because um, like everybody else, I, I wanted more time to interact with the different departments that were there. Uh, the second thing I found very useful was um, the fact that we were sent training slides and um, the training sessions are recorded and saved um, on our teams. So personally, what I've done is I've saved the slides in different folders according to the trainings. So I always go back, you know, I find it easy to go back and refer to the slides if I need to. Uh, however, I do agree as well that you know, some of the trainings are a bit too long winded and some are just not detailed enough. So I think it's just a question of finding a balance, you know, between the different trainings. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Peter. Hi, hello. So I, I, I got some feedback from all of my group because obviously I got them. Um, uh, quite a mixture. I got three new councillors, one with a bit of experience and and um, one with a bit too much experience. The um, positives, positives. The the fact that they were offered on there were two options. That that was um, well well received. The fact that the um, the material was available afterwards, which was all, also well received too. Um, the let's uh, so we call it constructive uh, criticism, if we're being polite. Uh, death by PowerPoint. It, it just went on and on, and I think this has been a recurring um, sequence um, just in, in the room. Uh, the, the the other things as well, like people felt that like they were being talked at rather than being talked to. There was um, you know, there wasn't as much opportunity for dialogue as as possible. Marketplace event um, good, um, in fact more than good. However, um, it would be nice, and this is one coming from the Uplands group leader, if it could have been extended, uh, because so, some people simply cannot get um, to council buildings between 9 and 3.30. So it would have been nice if the event was extended until 5 on, on that occasion, so that um, councillors in full time regular daytime employment could yes. actually could actually make it. But um, hopefully, you know, the, the comments from my group are taken um, as they are, because it is a mixture of, you know, of good and things to build on. Thank you. Thank you. Joe. Oh, yeah, Hello. yeah, thanks. It is just something that you as chair picked up on. You know, you know the, the best type of training that I've ever attended is always obviously the subject matter. Um, what Peter just picked up on, PowerPoint, I find so boring. It really is. It, it is. Um, it's just death by stealth, isn't it? Um, and you, you, you tend to find the best training is is done by someone that's really going to engage the audience well. And I don't think we see much of that. And and as bad as PowerPoint is someone, as you quite rightly said, um, reading a script, 
it, it, it needs to be, you know, all, all the subject matters aren't that serious. You know, we've got one or two that are very, very serious and, and have to be taken as. But uh, a, a, a lot of the others are just going through policies and procedures. So it, it could be a little bit more enlivening and engaging. Thanks very much. Thank you, Charles. Leslie? You guys come in again? Yes, yes, th thanks. Yeah, something you said prompted me to remember something else I wanted to mention. I think it's a bit unfair to assume that officers doing the job are necessarily the best people to do training. And in fact, if, if I'm going to be quite sort of blunt, it's a bit insulting also to people who are trainers. And I think that was another problem. Often it was when you'd got somebody an officer who was really very very um expert at their field and i know from past experience albeit years ago as an ex-teacher sometimes the teachers who are the worst are the ones who know the subject best you you need somebody who's not quite so expert or as as joe really was saying somebody who's more of a natural speaker to get some of these things across. And one final point, again, this death by PowerPoint, you can solve that by not just doing PowerPoint. There were some that used videos. So it wasn't just screen after screen after screen, or even just pictures, or the fact that some use the, you know, you can flood them in gradually instead of having the picture, uh, the whole thing straight away you can vary it but I, I also do realize there's a problem that in that once you put the powerpoint up on screen if you're doing it from online you can't see the person so again you've only got that whether there's any way of um hope uh, ms teams gradually improving things so that you've got the person speaking so you can see them as well in the future i don't know anyway hope hopefully that's helpful thank you Thanks, Leslie. That was a good point. Anybody else? Oh, Matthew. Yes, still got a hand up. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to uh, maybe take a different slant on this and say, you know, I think it's a really difficult job that the officers have got to do, trying to get that amount of information across in such a small space of time. I very rare occasion i thought it was death by, by powerpoint um i thought the, the option of the two different sessions was excellent i have friends who are councillors in other authorities and they only do the training during the day so i think we're really fortunate with regards to um what we've got in swansea and i think we should remember that as well um but yeah, I thought the standard of training, I thought was pretty good. Um, well, not more than pretty good. I thought it was really good, actually. Um, the planning one was one of the best ones for me, as was the uh, violence against uh, women one. Um, and, I, you know, I, it's, it's subjective, I think, isn't it? Because what some people react to, other people don't. And I get the old PowerPoint thing. I get it on a daily basis in work. But I think it's difficult to be able to deliver that information, get your points across, especially when you're trying to do it in person and on, you know, on teams as well. So I, I didn't find it um, an horrific experience by any means. Thank you. Just just one. It was just uh, one very minor follow up question because it was mentioned that maybe not all the councillors did attend. What, what was the take up for the, the training? do we know yeah i don't know well, I, I i don't have the answer with me um, it's something that we are work we are looking at at the moment uh, there's a duty and under the local government and uh, elections wales act 2021 there's a duty on political group leaders to ensure that councillors uh, undertake training and the, the duty specific on the leaders to uh, chase that up we have um we are we are putting things together to get that information out but of course i'll be bringing some last stuff to dem services committee as well because i think you are the champions in that regard as well so by the next committee when, I, when i've got more information I, I certainly will be sharing that because i need you to to nag the councillors and to work with the group leaders to get this information uh, get get the work done thank you no more 
can't see any more hands. Can, can we? Yeah, can I just answer, respond to some of the the points raised? Um, very disappointed that my trading wasn't listed as one of the top uh, three, but you don't worry about that. I'll I tough skin. I'll get on. I'll get over it. Um, and I did put pictures in mine as well. And I did give it a snappy title, but hey ho. Um, no, seriously though, um, the points made I think are very well made. Uh, death by PowerPoint, not death by PowerPoint. Too long, too short. Not not enough information. Too much information. It comes up to learning styles, learning styles analysis. All this stuff is out there. But the point is, we've got to get those basic messages in. Um, I, I do agree with uh, one comment that come, well, several comments that's been made. With one that uh, Councillor Walton made specifically. Um, one of the sessions went on over two two hours twenty. I think you said I listened in on that session. And it didn't finish, if you recall, the officer, uh, as, as James right, rightly uh, states, the officer didn't finish that session. Um, but because we had told people that sessions needed to be around 60 minutes to, to 90 minutes, uh, because we fee we have found and fed back from the Dem Service Committee and from Council itself that that's the message you wanted. But of course, some topics don't lend themselves. So what you've got is council uh, officers trying to put too much information in into the slot, going over the slot. And if you notice the number of councillors who left early because they had other appointments, not knocking the, the officers, uh, the councillors, they had to go. They they, you know, they told 90 minutes and all of a sudden you've got, you know, you try and be polite and stay for another 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but it goes on for another hour. That's very difficult. So I think we as officers have got to got to be got to understand that um, if the topic is too big for your ninety for your sixty to ninety minutes, we should do a part one and a part two. Let's not be afraid of of of, of uh, splitting these topic areas. So there's certainly stuff we can do. You know, is there giving out uh, 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 as the chair says? Um, nothing worse than us reading out what the uh, presentation is. You misery that at home. Well, in that sense, we could almost give pre-reading before the course. All of a sudden, that can save 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and that can speed things. That, it's not about speeding things up. It's getting the level right before we start the training, which puts everyone on a similar um, uh, playing field before we start. So there's little things like that we can do. I will feed this back. The comment about the marketplace, as expected, it, it, it's you know it, it always it, it's always seen as an excellent um, session. Um, take the point that it it wasn't long enough for the actual interacting side of it, um, but of course I, I was just thinking then perhaps um, I'm not sure I'll get shot by the chief exec for suggesting this that okay. perhaps once or twice um, before a council say four o'clock before before a five o'clock council we could do a department not every council I'm not saying that for a moment but perhaps twice a year could have a departmental marketplace where we where we've, you come up up to the hour before if you want to come and chat to a few little officers it could be an option for you to get a meet and greet and I wouldn't try and go bigger than that but I think that might be a simple suggestion that we can keep these situations up and it also gets us then maybe not departmentally it might be more team focused I don't know you know let the let the director head of service discuss that but that might be an option that we can we can look at as a dem services committee to to recommend to go uh, forward other than that I do take the points that have that have been made I will be a little uh, we'll just ask the one question um, that was raised by councillor McEttrick you feel that there wasn't enough of how to be a counsellor on most sessions. Um, do you feel it's too late or can I, are you happy for me to try and put something on about some basics that I, I, know I feel I could have, I've missed that, I could have put some stuff on. Is it too late or are you, you know, is it, or have I missed the, have I missed the window? You probably haven't missed the window. I mean, it'd be interesting. I'm not the only new councillor here, but yeah, obviously there there will be, there will be some stuff that could be helpful. And the biggest problem is you don't know what you don't know. So I know that sounds obvious, but mm. um, but I mean certainly I've 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 had some training through my party, for instance, on on casework for in, and I, I guess other people will have that option too. But for instance, the independent councillor certainly wouldn't have had that option, uh, and I'd be curious just to see what the options are there. Um, and, and yeah, you know, just some of the basics around you know how the council's structured, just from a purely practical things. If you had to impart three key bits of knowledge to a new councillor. 
about how to get stuff done what would they be Th those sorts of those sorts of questions obviously we've got a lot of ad hoc mentoring from again particularly within the parties but that, that may not apply to everyone Partic particularly obviously we've got a single green on his own who may not have the same support networks there so i would say probably not too late although we will all be learning I, I'll probably put a message out, an email out to councillors, just highlighting some areas and asking if people are interested in uh, more, more information on those areas to try and uh, I'll try and pick up some key areas that we could roll out. If I need a training, I'll do it. Otherwise, I can meet one on one or I you know this like I did that impromptu e-voting session before council last week. It, it was a last minute thing and it, it only takes five, ten minutes, but it's useful. Um, but perhaps I can look at some bite-sized chunks of training, even if I do a little a video and share the video with you. But simple stuff. But I, I will look at that to to, to assist certainly. Right. I I just think you'll never ever get it right. It's no longer you were learning all the time. Every week you learn something different as a counsellor, and I do agree with you. It is hard in the beginning, and you just think, oh. You know, all this and I've not had enough training because the training isn't working. My brain's gone dead. And uh, but I think you will get there and it'll be word of mouth. You, you, there's lots of people who've been here a long time to ask help from. So it, it will work. But you are learning all the time. I'm still learning. Thank you. Nobody else. Right, we'll move on to the last item. It is I made the work plan for the rest of this financial year? Um, obviously, I well, let me flick back to my... Uh, right. The, the, I'm looking for topics that we can look at. Tr training beyond the induction is, is clearly one that we need to be addressing. So I will be bringing a, a report uh, in due course on that. Another issue is... Uh, perhaps a, another revisit of the induction programme by way of attendance or training, um, just something more around those elements, what we what we can learn, um, maybe even putting a, a draft one together for 2027, just that it's, that it's fresh in our minds now, because when I'm asking you in 2026 for your ideas, it's a little late, but if I say, look, this is what your idea was five years ago, do you still think it's right? Because it's, cause, cause it's, it's, it's time sensitive. Um, I, I want to do some more sessions on um, multi-location meetings, uh, mainly about training, ensuring that you know the legislation is quite clear. Your cameras should be on if you're if you're remote. Um, things like e-voting, things about when I say I don't want to use the term behaviour, but um, I think what term I want to use, how you appear to others when you are on video. On you when you are live, you, we forget quite often that you know what what could be seen behind us in the room. Are we smart? Are we attentive? Are we seen to be listening? Just 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 those those little behaviour behavioural issues we need to we need to uh, enforce as a council because um, it looks professional. It's all about being looking professional, uh, says he without a tie. But mm, uh, it <laughs> but it is warm. And when it's cold, it's too cold to wear a tie. So same argument. But um, things like that I'm thinking of. But I would welcome any suggestions you may have um, to add to the work plan. Anything you want added that we need to discuss as a committee? So, anybody, any ideas? Peter? It's um, it, it's a little one because um, either the demographic graphic of the council, as with every five years, changes. I think we've got a younger demographic coming um, on on this occasion, um, more so than ever. Uh, I'd like to uh, to democratic services committee to explore um, the option of say regulatory committees like the planning committee actually meeting later on when when people can 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 um, attend because two two o'clock I've I've had in the past I have had extreme difficulty in, in making representations uh, on, on that and just ge generally sort of um, either canvas members from all authorities to make them more um, um, friendly hours to encourage people on ticking a diversity box who are, are working in fact I struggle to get 
get here for four. I, I I am here and I love being here. It's a wonderful committee with lovely people. But I, you know, I'd, I'd I'd like to see more, you know, more committees later on. And the, the planning just sticks out. I'm sorry, like a sore thumb. Um, some meetings could actually be later on in the day to allow members and the public to make representations. Thanks, Peter. Just to answer that point specifically, um, totally agree with you. And as head, head of Dem Services, I have a, a legal duty to do a survey of all councillors once every council term. Many councils run that survey on the, on, in, in, the, in the months following an election. I see no point in doing that. And council agreed with me on this. I intend to run that survey once it's gone through this committee probably around January uh, next year. That's to allow the new councillors to understand what their commitment is. Otherwise, I'd be doing a survey, people will be voting without knowing what they needed. So that is, I, I will be doing that in January, and that will help um, form the council diary going forward. And, and let's be quite clear, in that survey and that specific bit of legislation, it says that we must give due regard to working people, to people with res with caring responsibilities. You know, so you know, even if one person needs something and the others don't need it, you can't disregard that one person. So those are real things that we'll have to look at as a council. But equally, if you've got any issues and you're sitting on a committee, please speak to the chair of that committee because I'd hope the committee would try and work to try and be helpful. But of course. One point I will make from the last survey um, in 2018, whilst a lot of people think moving to the evening is a big help, um, we, we found, or councillors spoke very clearly, that evenings weren't ideal for them because they've got their fingers in so many other responsibilities with community town councils, group meetings, um, just meet, you know, just even some social things. So all of a sudden, in the evenings, there's only five a week, they, well, five working ones in a week, they disappear quickly. So it is difficult. So it's finding the times, maybe very early or later, so, but the survey will tease those out. Yes, you can, yes. Yes, I mean, I mean no, nobody's suggesting wholesale changes and the points that you make are very well made about, um, De delaying a survey until everybody's bedded in and they know exactly um, what a councillor involves. I'm still learning after 18 years. Um, but the but but the fact is, that, as I said, you know, if we take the example of the of the planning committee, you know, nobody's saying a wholesale jump, you know, to you know to seven o'clock in the evening, for example, or anything as draconian as that. We might want to you know trial the odd one at five o'clock. You know, to, to, to see availabilities, you know, and, and see if it, it, it does make an impact and it does make a difference. Um, things like that. So because some of these changes might have to be sort of phased in or the after compromise followed. I suppose it could work the other way. Yes. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> right. um, that people choose not to go on certain committees because it clashes with work or other family commitments. So they just choose the committees they go on according to when they are yeah and I, I, I know it's it's the point as well it's a huge help now that we can do multi-location so whilst a lot of people want to be physically present um you can now dip into a meeting and be di less disruptive on your working day or your caring day the fact you can dial in from home um some people say it's not the same, and I, I understand that, but equally, if, if it's the only way you can be part of that meeting, it's a good way to be part of that meeting. So, anybody else got any ideas or comments? Ah, oh, yes, Bridget. Sorry, Linda, just going on from the teams. Um, Obviously, I, f I find teams uh, so, so useful just because of the distance I am away from the Guildhall. And all right, whilst I do understand that it's not the same as being there, but um, with responsibility with my parents and with my children, it works. And, and I, I've noticed, you know, I can attend a lot more. So um, I find that really, really useful. But just going on from what who was saying earlier regarding um, cameras on and you know how we put ourselves across on camera 
and, and, and I know we've said we've had death by training, but do we need um, maybe just a, a, a brief training on how to work teams and the multi, you know, the multi use of it? And maybe it would help um, chairs of committees who are actually sat in in the guild hall um i don't think it doesn't have to be anything too intense but i don't know whether that would be a useful then yeah um i'm just i'm not sure about the use of the training in teams if any council needs training in teams um the it uh, team will provide that and you know we know we've we've offered it before, and I think every councillor, every sorry, every councillor pre May have certainly had that training. But of course, if if it's more is needed, of course we we can give that. Um, I suppose it's the etiquette side is what we want want to be looking at. Now that was laid out. Um, it's been out, laid out in the emails to councillors, and it was also readopted in the multi location meeting. Uh, policy which was which was presented to council in, in the annual meeting in May 24th of May this year but there's no harm in having a little session to just go through it because words is one thing but discussing um the content is another thing so I can certainly look to roll that out just some just some as I say some of these bite-sized training sessions I was talking about earlier you know if people want to join in they can join in ask me ask me questions but yeah that's certainly that's not a problem at all Leslie, do you want to come in? Yeah, just really following on from what Bridget said. I, th I think teams, I I can't recall having full training on it. And I have got to admit, I know very little beyond using it as meetings. There's an awful lot more, I'm sure, that teams has got to offer. And I don't know about it, whether I'd use it or not, but I don't know. But it would be useful to know a bit more about it. And just just a quickie on on committees and times. I, I think it's a very difficult one because different people want to turn up at different times to suit them and to try and have a time that suits everybody. Well, it's it's not going to happen. Um, so it, it's a difficult one. It's not an easy one to solve. So just wanted to comment there. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? So I'm sure if something comes to you in the middle of the night, it's something that would be useful to this uh, committee, then perhaps you could discuss it with uh, Hugh and if it's suitable, can we put on a future agenda? Often? That's right, go on. Yeah, we're all finished. Oh, it's patience. No, no, no? no oh, it's so. just I just saw that one. Right, well, that's it for this afternoon. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks very much.